Uh, this is a true change for the Republican Party. It says that not only do we support President Trump, we support his policies. And any Republican that isn't willing to adapt these policies, we are completely eradicating from the party. So it's up to Nikki Haley uh, what she does. Marjorie Taylor Greene is waging a war on the Republican Party. And she's winning. And here's why. This career-long Republican has finally called it quits. Thanks, Anderson. I'm here with Congressman Ken Buck, Republican of Colorado. You just came from the hearing. Before we get to that, you uh, announced some big news. You're leaving Congress at the end of next week. I am, yes. I'm, I'm resigning my seat and, and creating a vacancy um, in my district. Why? Our, uh, my colleague Melanie Zanona is reporting that uh, there is such tension among House Republicans that many of them aren't even going to a retreat that's going to happen at the end of this week. Is, is that tension part of why you're leaving so abruptly? I, I think this place is dysfunctional. For example, I am the, the number third ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. I haven't even asked my questions yet. Forty, fifty people have gone before me. But that, that could be personal. With, with well, all it, it could be personal, but, but, it, but a lot of this is personal. And that's the problem. Instead of having decorum, instead of uh, operating in a professional manner, this place has just evolved into this bickering and, and nonsense and not, not really doing the job for the American people. Burning the bridges behind him, Republican Representative Ken Buck announced an unexpected resignation from Congress in a tell-all interview with CNN. But what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Process. Is it really that miserable right now to be, I mean, from the outside in, it doesn't look that fun. From the inside in, is it that bad that you're saying... I'm done. It is the, the worst year of the nine years and three months that I've been in Congress. Um, and having talked to former members, it's the worst year in 40, 50 years uh, to be in Congress. But, but I'm the leave. Republican Party is in such a state of deep denial and radical delusion that whenever a party member speaks out against the GOP, it's an unexpected shock to hear a rational voice cutting through the partisan dynamics to call attention to the fact that what is happening is not normal. The mutation of the right into a hasty authoritarian machine is an abnormality. On the contrary, instances like this offer a glimmer of hope that rationale or integrity are still alive and may yet prevail over the blind loyalty and extremism of the Republican Party. But when Republican politics has devolved to be as low impact and self-serving as possible, when the false notion of Republican decorum has decayed into outright hatred with ridiculous dogmatic outburst like this we're here to tell government we don't want your benefits we don't want your welfare don't come knocking on my door with your Fauci outie you leave us the hell alone and free zones are the most dangerous places in our country the Second Amendment is absolute and it's here to stay a recent report states that Americans own 46% of the world's guns I think we need to get our numbers up, boys and girls. The people, my people are so smart. And you know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. It's hard to believe that people are still clinging to the sinking ship of the alt-right and it has only gotten worse. But what else are we supposed to think when the new vanguard, the rising stars of the Republican Party, deliver bizarre lines like this? We see you, we hear you, and we stand with you. The yeah. right is so clearly derivatively removed from the double entendres and dog whistles that they've used before. This odd rebuttal to the State of the Union perfectly summarizes what is wrong with the Republican Party today. A political party that has nothing left to say, no pretense to hide behind, and a wilting supply of fear 
and insecurity, to stoke dissent and enforce insubordination. And for Representative Ken Buck, it seems like enough is enough. Because on his way out of office, he is delivering fiery rebuttals and retaliations against former party members, making sure to send a clear message against what the Republican Party has become and what it will continue to morph into unless we fight back. If only the idea reached him and other politicians sooner. Hmm. Still, the mechanisms that allow for a party member to watch as their peers dismantle a system that they were sworn to protect is a deafening blow to the integrity of Republican representatives. But where does the enabling complicity of a terrible regime come from? Because there are many representatives like Ken Buck who disapprove of the extremes of the Republican Party and yet still continue to quietly co-sign on its most harmful directives. Surely a tolerance for the vitriol of the right is rooted in an initial rationale that laid the common ground for a political platform. But I believe it's the right's antiquated notion of loyalty, which is to blame for the dysfunction. A nudged trend to retain legacy relationships with political families that nepotize the political process. But even then, the truth is more elusive than that. Disguised behind polity that designates a devastating tradition of organized threats and intimidation exercised by Republican leading members. Just take the example of Mitt Romney himself, a behemoth who just failed to meet Obama's popularity during his premier run for president, and who didn't seem to cause much of a ruckus until later in his career, where he began to fight back against the MAGA tide, expressing discontent at the decay of decorum, and only mild indifference towards the harshening political landscape. The question arising from Mitt Romney's legacy is ultimately one of reverence against subordination and the responsibility of Americans speaking out against injustice when they see it. And as a sitting congressman, how can you ultimately align yourself with the Republican Party and eventually decide to break away without recognizing the rotting core at the center? But regardless of their failure to admit the truth, the obvious still must be stated. These men are burning bridges with the alt-right that should have never been built in the first place. And in a decaying democratic process, riddled with special interest, and continually narrowed by dynasties of political power, it is almost impossible to be a Republican and an American who centers the guiding principles of democracy and freedom that conceived this nation. Because for most Americans, there has been one too many straws from the Republican Party that now it is time for them to break. This is Adrian Costa with Rebel HQ. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check back for more videos. See you guys soon.